क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम इकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड टू डेज इज द क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स अ प्रॉब्लम नंबर सिक्स वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व अ प्रॉब्लम नंबर सिक्स एंड दिस इज द लास्ट क्वेश्चन बिफोर एंट्रिंग टू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन द मच मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट इज अ फ्रीक्वेंसी शिफ्टिंग प्रॉपर्टी टाइम शिफ्टिंग प्रॉपर्टी एंड द टाइम डिफ्रेंशिएशन प्रॉपर्टी इन मेनी ऑफ द क्वेश्चन यू हैव सीन अ थ्री बेसिक प्रॉपर्टीज वन सेकेंड एल रिपीट अ फ्रीक्वेंसी शिफ्टिंग अ टाइम शिफ्टिंग एंड अ टाइम डिफ्रेंशिएशन प्रॉपर्टी और एल्स अ फ्रीक्वेंसी डिफ्रेंशिएशन प्रॉपर्टी ऑल दीज फोर प्रॉपर्टीज आर इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड रिमेनिंग वन इज लाइक अ थियरम्स इनिशियल वैल्यू थियरम फाइनल वैल्यू थियरम एंड कन्वोल्यूशन थियरम विल सॉल्व दिस ऑल द थियरम्स सेपरेटली नाउ विल सॉल्व ऑल बेसिक प्रॉब्लम्स ऑन इनिशियल वैल्यू फाइनल वैल्यू एंड कन्वोल्यूशन सेपरेटली This is a differentiation property because t is multiplied with u of t, and in second part we have u of t minus one, which means here I'm going to use a time shifting property, which is a simple. You can directly get the idea just after looking at the questions. If the t is multiplied, then of course we will use a frequency differentiation property, and here the time is delayed means what? You have to use a time shifting property. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to separate this function as a x1 of 2 and x2 of t. I will first of all solve this x1 of t and x2 of t, and then I'll substitute both the values in x of s. So let's we will solve this question. The first part is t into u of t. That is, if we apply Laplace transform of this function directly, then first of all you should know the Laplace transform of u of t. That Laplace transform of u of t is 1 by s. Now. If the Laplace transform of u of t is one by s, then you can directly obtain the frequency shifting or frequency differentiation property on it. So, according to differentiation property, that is because t is multiplied to u of t, that's why I'm going to use a differentiation property. Now, what is it? If right here my function is differentiated only once, that's why I have placed minus one d by ds of one by s. Why minus sign is there? Why basically? If you go through the properties, what is mentioned minus t raised to any is my function. Here minus sign is not mentioned on the left hand side. That's why I have considered on right hand side. Now, if we have a t square, then I'm not going to write this minus sign. But right now, if you have a simple method, if we have a odd number of powers, then of course place a minus sign on right hand side. And if we have even powers on t, then just forget it. Now, right now, my power is even. That's why I'm going to differentiate this u, u of t only once. Now, again, the much more important. In all the problems, we have studied uh, two different properties or two different formulas of differentiation. The first one is u into v, and the second one is u by v. So here, I'm going to use a u by v property or formula. Now, we know that a differentiation. property or differentiation formula of u by v is v derivative of u that is s i'm going to write it as it is and differentiation of 1 is 0 minus u derivative of u that is 1 i have written as it is whereas differentiation of s is 1 because d by ds of s is gets cancel and the in the denominator we have v square that is the s is replaced by s square now in the numerator side s into 0 becomes 0 and minus minus becomes plus that's why the result is 1 by s square so whenever you have a t into u of t then you can directly write this formula 1 by s square if you know the value otherwise try to solve it separately now we'll solve the second part that is u of t minus 1 now the second part that is u of t minus 1 so first of all we know that t minus 1 means what the function is delayed or advanced whenever a delayed or advanced term is come then always give a priority to time shifting property or always use a time shifting property so according to time shifting property if the function is delayed by minus 1 or if the function is advanced by minus 1 or you can say if the function is delayed by some values then always multiply that value with sign with power of s e to the power s is multiplied with the minus 1 then 
you will have e to the power minus s if we have minus 2 over here then of course this s is multiplied by minus 2 then result will be e to the power minus 2s if we have plus 2s over here if we have u of t plus 2 then of course i will multiply plus 2 with s and you will get e to the power of plus 2s right now we have minus 1 then result is e to the power minus s into a laplace transform of u of t that is 1 by s now this is my equation number 2 now if we apply Laplace transform x of t, then of course Laplace transform is also applied on left hand side. Now, of course, here we have two different functions and having minus sign in between them. So, of course, we will use a linearity property in over there. So, now using a linearity property, we can solve these functions separately as I've already solved. And just the last one is I'm going to substitute values over there. So Laplace transform of t into u of t is 1 by s square whereas Laplace transform of u of t minus 1 is e to the power minus s upon s. Here look at here the denominator is not same. You can stop here also you can stop writing over here but if you want then you can move on just by multiplying s in the numerator and denominator on the second part. If we multiply s by s then of course what we will get in the denominator we have will get s square and in numerator we have s into e to the power s as the denominator is common or is same so you can equate the numerators so s square and s square will be common and in numerator we have 1 minus s into e to the power s. If you want then you can move further also or if you want then you can stop here also. No one is going to deduct your marks. So this is the way to solve numericals based on properties of Laplace transform. So, thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikeda and subscribe Ikeda for further more videos. Thank you so much.